Hey guys, this is Scott Leroy Scott Leroy Marketing coming in for another weekly update. And today's update is actually on how you can link up your app over with your KDB Command platform. So if you want to add it over to your website, you're definitely more than welcome to. All right, so the way that you'll have to do it right now, though, is through an iframe. So we're going to create a custom page, and then we're going to add inside the iframe code to display the app on there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is obviously log into Command, and we're going to click on the Sites option on the left-hand side. Now this is where you're going to be able to see all of your landing pages, your agent site pages, neighborhood pages. Now the one we're going to focus on is agent site pages up here so we can actually view all the different site pages we currently have available. Now that being said on here, then I'm going to click on create a new site at the top right. Now it says create a new site, so you might think you're making a new site, but you're actually making a new page, right? So you're only allowed one site per agent, but this way you can add site additional pages on here. So once we click on that, then we're going to click on On My Agent Site on here so we can actually add this over to our actual .kdb.com IDX site. All right, so I'm going to click on Create Page. All right, and then it should allow us to start syncing this up. If it doesn't, all right, then we'll come back to it. Now, once again, the, the main one that you'll typically want to utilize on here is usually Google Chrome and an incognito browser will help out the best just to make sure that everything goes through properly. All right, but I'm in Google Chrome, so this is perfect. It's my web browser. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to rename this just to make it a little bit simpler. So I'm going to name it as App. Perfect. All right, and then on here on the right-hand side, as of today, as of November 18th, you do still need to have a widget. So I'm going to add inside the contact form just to have a you know, simple widget on here. All right, and then we can add inside our content blocks. So I'm going to add inside the content blocks on here, and I'm just going to add inside a text one up here at the top. That's all I'm going to add inside. All right, just a text block on here, and that is it. All right, so with that being said, now that I've got this added in, so we have to add inside some type of contact, or sorry, not contact, but some type of widget on here. So I'm just going to have a contact one at the bottom, then I have our text section. Now, this is where I can actually go through to add inside text if I want to, and I can even paste inside that iframe code. Now, sometimes I'm trying to click on this. It's not giving me access to it. If that messes up for you or anything of that sort, I don't know if this helps or not, but sometimes I'll click on preview. And then that'll allow me to go through. If I unclick preview, then it'll actually allow me to edit it a little bit further. All right, so I don't know if that'll actually help you guys out or not or anything of that sort, but definitely try it out if it is giving you a, a little bit of funky time on here. All right, so it looks like I deleted it and then I added the text back in and it's working properly now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually go over and create the iframe code. All right, so you will need your app URL added in on this. You will need to have that app URL. I guess they want me to search for funny cat videos. There we go. All right. Now, if you have the URL, now the good part about this is it doesn't just have to be for the app. It can literally be for any page. All right. So you're probably going to see if you're getting this from the tips email, there's one about how to utilize the blog option, a homekeeper. All right. So you can do this for any page that you want to iframe at the end of the day. But if I go to Google and I type in iframe generator, all right. So I'm going to do iframe generator. I'm just going to search real quick. All right, the main one that I typically utilize is www.iframe-generator.com. Now, you can use any of these that you want to. If you have a preferred one, feel free. All right, they're all going to do the same thing at the end of the day to create that code for you. All right, so I'm going to use this first one, iframe-generator.com. All right, and this is perfect. So now I can actually go through and I can set up my iframe. So the URL that we're going to use on here is going to be your app URL. All right, so make sure, I'm going to use Lord Godfrey's on here, KW2, I, wait, is it KW, J, yeah, KW2I, JU2PO. Is that it? It's got to be. I've said it so many times over the past couple of years. Let me double check real quick. Yep, there we go. All right, whew, thought I was losing my mind for a second. All right, so once we have inside our URL that we want to utilize, now once again, this is obviously an example for the app, but at the end of the day, you can utilize this for any URL. All right, then you can actually update some of these items up here too. So if you want to change the height that's going to display, or sorry, the width, or you want to change the height, you're definitely more than welcome to. All right, so maybe I want to make this 800. I want to make the width 600. That's good. I want to add inside a scroll bar so people can scroll. That's the one that I always add in. I'm going to take out the border on here. I don't need to worry about it. There isn't even a border, so we're good to go. All right, but adding in that scroll bar will help out. You can always click on preview if you want to see what this will look like, or I can just generate it right away and it'll automatically create that for me. All right, so now I can literally just copy this, or I can click on copy it. So I'm going to do right click copy. You can do control C or command C, depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac. And then I can paste it inside here. Now, this is what it's going to show when we're creating this page. 
right, but whenever we actually save it, this is actually going to pop up with that iframe instead. All right, so then if I went through and I did configure widgets on here, for instance, all right, then I could actually go through and I can click on the contact option. I can configure this further if I want to update some information. This looks all good to go. So I'll click Save and Apply. We're all good to go now. All right, so I can click Save Changes on here, and we're perfect. So do I want to make this you know, visible? I'm going to click Yes on here. Now, creating the landing page is just one part of it, though, because once that's created, if you notice, this eyeball on here is not active. It's not the, the bluish teal color on here. It's actually still gray, so it's not an active subpage. You will need to go to Agent Site Settings. And so we're going to click on Agent Site Settings up here. You'll need to click on this and select Pages to add inside a brand new page for whatever page you just created. So in this case, it's for my app. So when I click on Pages, I can then go through and I can add inside a page. So I'm going to click on Add Page. I'm going to put it as Download My App. I'm going to make the URL slug slash app to make it simple. And then I can even put inside my SEO description. That'll pop up over inside search engines like Google. All right, so I'm going to leave that as is right now just to make it simple for this video. And if I click on Select Page on here, here's the one that I created. Now, the reason I suggested changing the name is it'll make it a lot easier to find that page if you have updated the name of the actual page. So I'm going to click Continue. We're now all synced up. And if I click Save Changes, voila, we now have downloaded my app. So I can come back up here and I can refresh this. I can move it around. All right, so now if I go to my site, so I'm going to go to scoutleroymarketing.kw.com. Right, it's going to pull up my current IDX site. All right, and then we're going to have right on here, download my app. Now let's see if it pops up real quick. All right, it did. So that way, if I want to come over here, I can actually make it even wider if I want to change the iframe again. But I can see how this will automatically pop up for me. All right, and then once again, if I want to, I can even add inside code to make it center aligned. So it'd be right in the center over here. But I just want to give you an idea as to how simple it is to add this inside right away. All right, and once again, you can always go through and adjust these items as well, all right, the width and the height, depending on how, you know, big or how you know, far over you want it to go, all right? But at the end of the day, that's how you can actually iframe a page on here too. All right, and if you notice, let me come back over to my site real quick. Perfect. All right, if you notice on here too, then I also had one as well, and you'll see it in a different video for the blog, all right? So you can actually add inside, like in this case, we've got our little homekeeper blog that was added in too. All right, so there's a bunch of different options that are available for you to go through and add inside. But at the end of the day, you're just gonna utilize an iframe code to add this in right away. All right, so that's how you can actually put a site inside your site at the end of the day on your K2B IDX site. So there you go, so that is your K2B command tip for the day.